Ice Stories Live. And he got her x-rays from uh, the, the, the last visit and put them up. He said, see, this is you, your legs, your bones, full of cancer. She said, could you take more x-rays? Which he agreed to. So he sent her to the x-ray department and she was quite some time came back and they brought the, the x-rays to give to the doctor. The doctor then placed those x-rays beside the former ones. He went over to the phone and he said, please send the x-rays for Sister Pauline Gill. These are obviously not hers. The response that the doctor got was, doctor, we didn't believe it either. In fact, that's the second set that we took. So he took the doctor, took her, um, her folder, and across the front of the folder, he wrote one word, miracle. And he wished her well. The next day, this was now a Thursday, I had the appointment the next day, she appeared on some may have heard of 100 Huntley Street, uh, which is broadcast <clears throat> worldwide in Canada. She told a little bit of the story beforehand and they invited her <clears throat> to share on 100 Huntley Street what had happened. And the result of that were many, many calls for people who also wanted to, to know Christ, is this real? And they too asked for prayer. God has done a number of other miracles in my walk with him. And I just didn't want to take the time to share all of those things with you today. But I trust that I can leave with you those happenings because Jesus is real. If only you open your heart, invite him to come in to your heart. He will set you free like he has me and give you a brand new life. Now, I've suggested to, uh, to Alan Jones that he conclude the evening in a time of prayer, perhaps giving you an opportunity to come to know Jesus Christ as well. So, Alan, can I turn that to uh, to you, and if there are any questions that um, one would like to ask, I'm, I'm certainly available to do that. Thank you so much, Alan. Thank you, Blair. Certainly you've seen God working in miraculous ways, even from your birth. And this God that Blair, Blake's been speaking about, he's real, as Blake said, he's alive, Jesus is alive. And with God, it says nothing is impossible. To those who believe, all things are possible. God is a miracle God. He is still working miracles. But the greatest miracle of all is when a person gives their life to Jesus Christ. At that moment, they become a new creature. They change completely. They receive the gift of eternal life. That is the greatest miracle. And you can have that miracle in your life. You can know the same miracle-working God that Blake knows. What do you have to do? Well, the Bible says we've all sinned. We've all come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, not one. And God sent his only son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who came and died on a cross to pay the penalty for your sins and my sins. He poured out his own blood to wash our sins away. And if you will repent of your sin, that means turn away from your old way. Turn away from your old life and invite Jesus to come into your heart and life. He will come in and you will become what the Bible says, born again. You will have a rebirth. Your spirit will be reborn and you will become a child of God. And your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. 
And then you can look forward to eternal life with Jesus forever in heaven. So I want to pray a prayer. And if you would like to receive this wonderful gift, then pray this prayer with me sincerely right now. Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you now. I confess that I am a sinner because the Bible says we have all sinned. We've all come short of the glory of God. And that includes me. But I believe, Jesus, that you died on the cross in my place taking the punishment for my sins. And you poured out your precious blood to wash my sins away. I repent of my sins. I turn away from them. I turn to you with all my heart. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come into my life right now by your spirit and give to me the free gift of eternal life. I receive you now. Thank you for coming into my life. Now I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is the son of God that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God has raised him from the dead. And I thank you, Lord, for saving me, for making me a child of God. Help me from this day forward to follow you, to serve you. And I look forward to that day now when you will come again and you will take me to be with you forever. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, please let us know. Please contact us on our hotline, plus 44-794-355-0287. Or go to our website, lifestoriesworldwide.com. There you will find the Salvation Prayer link. You'll find an article, How Can I Get to Know God?, so many things you will find there to help you. So thank you for praying that prayer. Blair, I wonder if you could pray for the people who have made that commitment. Father, I thank you for those who have heard the story that you have given me. 
Father, I'm reminded so many times of Matthew 18, 20, wherein Jesus spoke saying, where two or three are gathered in my name, that I am present with you. I thank you, Father, that you are present with us right now. You hear our heart, you hear our words, our thoughts. And Father, for those that have opened their hearts tonight and have said, yes, Jesus, I want you to, to reign in my life, to be my Lord and Savior. That you indeed, Lord, would not uh, leave them forsaken as your word has says that you promise to be with them at all, all times. So, Father, I just ask that these individuals would again just thank you for what has taken place in their hearts, in their lives tonight. It's a brand new life for them. So, God, I would just ask that you would pour your blessing upon them, each one, that they too would glorify the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to hand over to George now. I believe George has some questions for you, Blake. Okay, George, over to you. Thank you, Alan, and thank you, Blake. Nice to see you. Likewise. <laughs> How's the weather in Canada? Well, it's nice where I am. <laughs> <laughs> we can see that. Anyway, Blake, you said at the very beginning, you still feel young. You know, you feel... What is it that makes you feel so young, do you think? Well, I know that Jesus has given me a new lease on life. And uh, I had mentioned that my dad lived to about 100 years of age, just short of a few days. I'd love to tell that part of the story, but I don't think I will. Um, it's just because of my relationship with him. He just uh, gives me the, the vibrance, the uh, the youth. I can't say it's uh, uh, as a young boy, but I, I just I want to continue on uh, in whatever service that I can. And I, and I claim uh, to be young in the Lord and young in mind and spirit and in health. Excellent. You mentioned your dad. You told us a little bit about your mother as well, later on in her, her, um, her sight. But tell us a little bit about your mom and dad growing up and, and your brothers and sisters, please. Yeah, well, I, I grew up in the country, <clears throat> um, as, as near, near Niagara Falls, uh, as I mentioned earlier. My mother and dad took me to, to church as a young boy. But no one told me, even going to church, that... I had to uh, accept Jesus Christ or ask mm -hmm. Jesus to come into my life, into my heart. It wasn't until I was 10 years of age that that uh, school teacher told us about that. But once my life had changed, my parents were very much interested in what had happened uh, to me. They saw a difference in my life. And in fact, my dad and my mom together said, I want what our son has. And so they too opened their hearts and invited Jesus Christ to come into their lives. And we will be together for eternity because of that. Wow, fantastic. So how important then do you think it is that we should share, you know, Jesus with young, both young and old? My, there's no measurement uh, for that. <clears throat> start at a young age and don't do as I do, I, I walked away. So it's vital. It's vital for everyone to, to come to know Christ at a young age, to walk with him, talk with him, and listen to him uh, speak into your heart, into your spirit, at whatever age it might be. I just received an email today from uh, a young man of uh, 90, he'll be 99 uh, later this month, full of joy. So it's important for individuals of all age uh, to to know Christ and to walk with him. Amen. Now you showed us also your little Bible that you still have. I have one the same actually, which I encountered when I became a Christian. So 
How important is the Bible then? It's very, uh, very important. The, the, uh, the Word of God is a very important source of, of spiritual truth. Um, if I would suggest if you don't have a Bible that you get one and begin to read it uh, and just digest all that's in that that it's the best seller and has been the best seller of all times every year since the the time that it was uh, it was printed so there's a reason that everyone should have should have a bible and uh, i can't recommend it highly enough i probably have eight or ten versions and uh, i so enjoy excellent now as a 10 year old you told us you know you came to know jesus and you influenced your parents how how influential were you with your brothers and sisters and those in school you were with well i'm glad that you asked that question <laughs> <laughs> my uh my next uh, brother up uh at a at a young age um walked away from the denomination that we had attended it doesn't matter what the denomination is and uh, he studied to become a, a priest. And uh, he left, left that after about seven years. Uh, very personal reasons. He said, uh, I, I want to get married and, and have a family. So through it all, uh, he too accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. My oldest brother passed away at the age of 47. Now, he uh, got cancer. had the wonderful privilege of visiting with him uh, the day before he passed away and uh, I said Gordon that was his his name you know that I've lived a different lifestyle than you have and he, he was able to say yes I, I recognize that and he asked if I would pray with him for him and I led him in a in a sinner's prayer. Wow. Hmm. Fantastic. What about you? Have any sisters? None. Just brothers. No. Yes. <laughs> Just three, yeah. Is it? yeah. Excellent. I mean, okay, you grew up in the normal family, but it says, you tell us that you excelled in lots of play in, in life and you went on to work for the federal government in Canada. Did you okay. work for the FBI by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't the FBI, but the... I, I just feel that God uh, had given me uh, unusual favor. And I, I call it unusual, but certainly undeserved favor. Even when I was in uh, high school, I'm not sure what it's called in the UK or other countries, um, I was elected as the, uh, as the editor-in-chief of the high school newspaper. I think that was grade 10. And then the next year, um, I was elected as president of the student assembly body for, uh, you know, for the entire high school. Mm -hmm. 
I was also president of the uh, the graduating class. And uh, it just seems that there's been one thing after another. Uh, after leaving uh, school, high school, that is, um, I remember at one point I was serving on 14 different committees. And for most of those, all at one time. And for several of those, I was either the president of it, the coordinator, or whatever it might be. And I don't, uh, I don't brag about any of that whatsoever. I guess I have a tough time saying no, but uh, I just see that that it's only God. It wasn't me. It could not have been me in any way at all. It was only only God. Uh, only He is to be exalted through anything that I have been able to do up to this point. Excellent. Now, as I say, you had a fantastic spirit at 10 years of age, went through college, but and rose up the heights of um, federal government. But you said you fell away. Okay. Tell us a little bit about how that happened. How easy was that for you to fall away? Very easy. With uh, hanging around with guys at, at work, particularly, uh, I started to, to gamble quite a bit, sometimes all night long, and try to go into and work the next day. Um, there were just things that that uh, I got caught up with that they were doing, and um, <laughs> I I never became uh, a uh, a drinker, and I asked God at a young age, please help me to uh, to dislike it, mm -hmm. and that's what happened. Um, I I even played poker with these guys, as I mentioned, uh, you know all night long and they would put a beer in front of me and I'm not putting anybody down that, that, that has a beer now and then or anything of the sort. I, I just didn't want it. And uh, so they would put a bottle down in front of me and I would slip out to the washroom, dump it down the sink and fill it with water and come back and drink it. I was big stuff then. <laughs> so uh, it was just hanging around um crowds that I had not done before and I was uh, very easily swept away into you know into things that uh, I, I call them things of of the world that were not pleasing to God so uh, how did that um, say take you into uh, ESP and um, you know hypnotism and spiritual how did that take you into there well in some of the classes that I took at the university uh, bordered on a number of these uh, um, topics and uh, I, get, I got a hold of a number of books I began to read and read and read more uh, about these things and I got caught up in it um, and uh, I, I'm certainly not proud of any of that but that's what can happen when you don't stay firm in God's word um, through your walk with Christ and um, that's what happened to me. I, I uh, disappointed God and I disappointed uh, people around me. But it was easy, easy to do mm -hmm. uh, because I did not stay faithful uh, in his word. It is so, so important. So you see, it was easy to do to get caught up. How easy was it to get out of it? Truthfully, it was very easy. Uh, I just turned my back on all of it. I said, mm -hmm. God set me free from this. And he gets all the credit for it. I had no problem whatsoever turning my back to anything that I felt uh, was displeasing to him. And I said, I am sold out to serve you. And it was not like a snap of the finger, but almost... Mm -hmm. I had uh, no problem whatsoever once I recommitted my life to Jesus Christ. And in that time, how did all these things affect your work life, your home life? My home life? <clears throat> yeah. My kids had a brand new dad. They knew what I was like uh, through that, that short time. My parents, as I mentioned before, saw uh, a brand new son. And... Uh, it, it, it had a great impact on them. And mm -hmm. as, I, as I mentioned, uh, with, uh, with regards to my, uh, uh, my parents, they wanted what, uh, what their son had found. And with regards to my children, 
uh, it's just a joy to have seen each one of them come to Christ uh, as their Lord and Savior and uh, just filled with God's Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so to our every one of their children, uh, except for my daughter's youngest, which is on, only two, but he's on the way <laughs> to, to uh, serve the Lord too. Now you told us, of course, that, that there was a certain thing happened to you. You found out about the heart, out about the heart condition. Yes. How did you react or how did you feel when you, when you found out about the heart condition? Well, I was scared. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought it, my life could end at any time. But you see, God took that, used it to catch my attention, bring him back to him. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the way to the hospital, that's when I had that. Uh... Life Stories Live.